Okay, guys. Well, hey, uh, wasn't that amazing? I mean, praise God, right? Now, um, I'm so excited because I got to, I got to the end of this. You know, I, this started in 2002, probably the, I think it was the last day of July 2002 when I got saved in that alley, and now everything's come full circle. This is it. Anyway, this is awesome because. Um, more stuff has happened. I can't wait to show you guys. It's just, it's so wild, man. It's so cool. I want to show you the scriptures, though. I want everybody that comes to this channel, I want y'all all to read all of Isaiah 29, not 22. 29, uh, 22 is pretty cool, but Isaiah 29 is what unlocked all this. And so, if you could read Isaiah 29. I would appreciate it. That way we'll all be on the on the same page when we're talking about it. Okay, but I really would like for you guys to do a word study. Um, if you need a resource, uh, I highly suggest you use eSword. I want to show you something. Y'all y'all got to see this because this is going to fit right in. Okay, this is the scripture that the Lord God used to open all this up with me years ago. And, um, and I want to show you something. Up, up here in verse 1, the word for Ariel means uh, Jerusalem. It's symbolic name for Jerusalem. Guys, we are Jerusalem once you're saved. You become the new Jerusalem. Um, you know, you're, the new Jerusalem that comes down out of heaven is the bride of Christ. Let me just clear that up. The new Jerusalem from Revelation 3 is the bride of Christ. If, if you don't believe me, go read Revelation 21. And I, John, saw the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven, adorned like a bride. But watch this, watch this. So Ariel is Jerusalem, the symbolic name for Jerusalem. It says, Woe unto Ariel, to Ariel, the city where David dwelt, add year to year. Let them kill sacrifices. What do you think that means, just off the top of your head, before we translate it? Most people probably, you know, in their mind, picture sacrifices of bulls, goats, sheep, whatever. You know, uh, the word kill means a primitive root to strike. Now, don't forget, Revelation 9 talks about the, the locusts when they strike a man. It says, corrode by implication of attack to knock together, that is, surround or circulate to compass about. That's a really weird translation for kill. There's other translations. I want you to look at the word sacrifice. Let them kill sacrifices. A festival or a victim thereas. Is the word victim a word for like a bull or a goat? No, it's not. It's used for humans. That's a human word. Now, I want to show you something. As you read through this, I want you to I've already looked at all the I've already looked at these words. I know what they mean. I want you all to look at these words. I want you to look up the word multitude, the word stranger, and the word multitude and terrible ones. They shall pass away as chaff instantly and suddenly. You shall be visited by the Lord of hosts with the tempest and the flame of devouring fire. But I want you to look at twenty nine seven. And the multitude of all the nations that fight against Ariel. The multitude of all the nations that fight against Ariel. Look at what the word nations means. A flight of locusts. Wait till you see what the Lord showed me over the last two days. It's going to blow your mind. As if the big dead sheep altar wasn't enough. Let's have a look at those things. Let's look. So here's a giant, you know, locust right there. And in the mouth of the locust are God's angels going in as a food source. And the entire food source now, the entire food source turns into a giant sheep with its tongue sticking out. I mean, you got to be kidding, right? Then Isaiah 29, the, the scripture I want you to look at. It says, you know, those 
Woe unto them who go to great depths to hide their plans from the Lord. Uh, 29.15, look at this. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their works are in the dark, and they say, Who seeth us, and who knoweth us? So their identity is completely and utterly concealed. Wait till you see how concealed it was. 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 They're busted. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as a potter's clay. Well, let's go back. So if we're going to, surely your turning of things upside down. Well, here's a big dead sheep. So if we turn the dead sheep upside down, the dead sheep becomes the female reproductive system. Well, isn't that like right here? So isn't that convenient that when the dead sheep is turned upside down, it's the female reproductive system. Isn't it convenient when you turn the virgin upside down, it's a dead sheep. Oh, the virgin. The female reproductive system. So if you're praying to an image of the virgin, it's really a dead sheep. They just have it backwards here, right in front of your face. Dead sheep, female reproductive system. Dead sheep, female reproductive system. Queen Nefertiti, dead sheep. So anyway, so here's the point. This turned into something even bigger. It was like, oh my God. And so the Lord told me, I want you to look at this. And I was, well, this is the image. He showed me, I want you to look at it. Look at it. Let your spiritual gift work. Here's the face of the devil. I don't even have to draw it in. You can see it. He's got one eye open, one eye closed. His mouth is a triangle. Oh. Because that's the other race of beings. Remember Lady Gaga? My performance at the Grammy Awards about the egg and the rebirth is about another race of beings being birthed within the human race. Oh, it, it's a lot bigger than that. So here's the creature. Here's the queen of heaven. I mean, this is a xenomorph. This is something that, I mean, this is a giant uh, reptilian slash locust being. It's like something out of an H.R. Geiger movie. And so the Lord had me keep looking at it. And in the in the mind over here is is it's got the mind of the dragon. So this is the dragon. You, so you're looking at the dragon because see the mind of this creature is the dragon. I want you to look at this really gnarly picture with its wings spread. I want to show you this. Okay, so here it is sitting here, you know, the face of you know, the vagina is the face of the devil. It's pregnant, legs spread. It's got big wings like a bat. And uh, there's the eyes. And it's identical to the the image of the hunt club, the St. Hubertus hunt club when I did the Scalia videos. It's identical. Look, there you go. Here, Here's the, here's the image right here of the St. Hubertus Society. And now watch this. See, if I would have taken my pen and gone up here like this, if I would have followed this line to the tip of those, I rounded it off. I rounded it off right there. I should have kept going and gone like that. And when, when I trace over this image with the Sharpie marker, the end result of tracing over this thing right here is this thing right here, which is this alien thing. Well, look at this. Look at the face. Just look at the eye the eye, and the nose, and the mouth, nostrils, and the mouth. This is identical, uh, and I do mean identical, to this right here. It's identical. Now, by the way, these are pictures of me that are point-of-purchase ads. Uh, I didn't click on it. So these are pictures of me in point of purchase ads for my sunglass company, Vlad Eyewear. Uh, I'm always upside down, falling out of the sky. It's the strangest thing. I mean, flying upside down is very difficult. And even though I'm a pro skydiver, pro sky surfer, um, to get this particular shot with your cameraman in order to sell sunglasses, that's a pretty tough shot to get because you're going 120 miles an hour. And your cameraman, he's got a video camera and a big 35 millimeter still camera on his helmet. And if you hit his head, you're done. It's over. Um, so anyway, these, this is very odd to have all these point of purchase ads upside down. I'm always falling out of the sky upside down. Our tagline is come out of the darkness and into the light with Vlad eyewear. 
You're kidding me. All the angel, God's angels are falling into a vortex and being birthed into the flesh. So they're all falling from, uh, where from heaven and they're being birthed into the flesh. When you come into the flesh, how do you get birthed into the flesh? You come in upside down, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, you come upside down in your, to your, into your prison. Read the Acts of Peter, verse 37, 38, 39. Okay, so now I want to show you something. Y'all know who H.R. Geiger is, who did the Alien movies? Yeah, H.R. Geiger, really creepy guy. Uh, man, he did all the images for Alien. and Well, this is uh, his own artwork, man, right here. It has him being birthed out of vagina, and he's right side up. Look at that. Interesting. And look, and this, this is a really, really creepy, creepy image. Well, right here, right here, here is, look at this. This is the papal regalia right here. This is in, this is in the Vatican also. The Lord told me, look at it. <laughs> You're not gonna believe. Y'all aren't going to believe what this is. So, I'm, I'm looking at this thing and I'm drawing it in. And I'm dealing with the locusts of the earth. And so the Lord shows me, I mean, you know, it's going to take me a long time to draw all these little nuances in. And so I hear the Lord tell me, you know, like sit down and watch a movie. And I, I had bought that movie called Risen the other day. You know, it's about Christ. And so I thought, yeah, I'll sit down and I'll just put Risen on the DVD player, you know? And so, and I don't forget, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing in locusts. Okay, I'm going to pause this. I want to bring some up for you. Watch this. Okay, so anyway, so I'm sitting here decrypting this stuff, this thing right here, and I'm going like, oh my Lord. It's in the locusts are coming out of the pit. I'm like, oh my Lord. It's so crazy. And I'm sitting there just kind of going, this is crazy. And I'm trying to fast forward through the commercials in the movie called uh, Risen. And so I'm clicking this little button that you click the button, it goes all the way through one whole commercial. It's got two little fast forward arrows in a line. And so I click it like one, two, three, four, and I hear the Lord say, stop. And so I'm like, stop. So I stopped. And guess what trailer came on? This is crazy. So the, while I'm decrypting the locust thing coming out of the pit, this is what comes on. Now, don't forget, my name means Yahweh is given a bell ringer. That's what my name, Jonathan Cleck, means. Yahweh is given a bell ringer. Look what came on. Listen to the bell. Look. Look, look, while I'm sitting here decrypting this thing, uh, no, uh-uh, impossible. And it's locusts emerging. I was like, okay, Lord, I got it. He told me, decrypt it. Use your spiritual gift. Show the people. I'm telling you guys, everything you've seen, you saw the largest, listen to this, you saw the largest church in the world that it's it's its own country called the vatican and the largest altar of the largest church that claims to be christian is a dead sheep and a vagina that's insane wait do you see what this is everybody needs to read revelation 9 read isaiah 29 Okay, time's coming, folks. It's going to be wild. It's going to be wild. This is it. I mean, who would want this in a church anyway? Look at that image. That's freaking twisted. I mean, what the hell does that have to do? You know what I mean? But wait till you see what's hidden in this thing. Okay, I'm going to post this. Um, I probably won't get to this video I'm talking about till tomorrow. So sit tight. i got to draw in a bunch of stuff and color it. So sit tight. All right. Okay, here we go, guys. Let's start with Roman eight, Romans 8. 
And let's start with a prayer. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Father Abba, I just praise you and give you all the glory, all the thanks. And I pray that you'll allow me to deliver what you've delivered to me in a way that's concise, clear, and understandable for all who listen and that it fall about upon open ears and open hearts. And please open the eyes of the blind, Father. You said you've come to judge the world and to give sight to the blind. I pray that many people after watching this receive their sight and they're able to see how great the gift. Amen. Okay, we're going to listen to Romans 8. Romans 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. But if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint us with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now, and not only they, but ourselves also, which <coughs> have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, a hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. 
Okay, <clears throat> I wanted to start with that because this is quintessential in understanding all this. It says here that we are waiting for the adoption to it, the redemption of our bodies. That's what it, that's what the scripture says. The redemption of our body, because as I've shown you before in the previous videos, our bodies were made by a monster. Our flesh was created by an absolute monster. That's why that Jaguar commercial says, we've already created a beast. It's time for a whole new animal with the, with the same potent DNA. And they're, because they're getting ready to unleash the beast. And I'm going to show you all in these videos um, what that is. I'm going to show you the locusts that are coming out of the pit. And I'm sorry, this is it's going to be some scary stuff for anyone that doesn't have the Spirit of God. You might feel yourself just, you know, anxious. Stop and pray. Pause the video. Stop and pray. Uh, this is uh, going to be some heavy stuff. So, I want to show you the way the Lord's just confirmed a few things. I don't want to spend a lot of time going over old ground, but I want to do a quick, super quick recap. So, I want to show you. The creature itself was made subject to vanity. The creature itself shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption. We are that creature. I have bad news for you. The creature is us. We were modified in the garden. So what happened? We fell, and you saw the throne, and we're going to go over that throne one more time of the sheep, and all God's angels going into a vortex. That vortex is then being birthed into the flesh. That's why Jesus came in to get us through the flesh, lived out a sinless life in the flesh. Therefore, his sacrifice would be worthy or would be accounted righteous before God in order to buy us back. Someone had to pay the price in the flesh. So here we go. Um, let's look at some images. We've looked at this image uh, the other day. You have an image of the devil. Here's the devil's eye open. See his eye open? It's kind of droopy. Here's the eye closed. Do you remember what I told you? People that wink at me, they're the ones that draw images of dead sheep and animals. They'll draw an image of myself and they'll give it to me. There'll be a dead sheep on it. Okay, right here is an image of a devil. There is his eye is open, his eye is closed. Mouth, horns going up. I want to show you Psalm 3519. Let not them rejoice that are my enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. I'm sorry. Neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without cause. That is the fulfillment of what Jesus said in John 15. They hated both me and my father, thus fulfilling the scriptures. They hated me without cause. And those that hate us without cause, they wink their eyes at us because they are straight up devil operatives. Now, remember, until you're saved, you're the devil. And I'm sorry if you don't believe that, you are. We began the entire paradigm in the Bible. You have good and evil in you. And all the flesh belongs to the devil. It belongs to him. And he owns it. He has legal title deed to the flesh. Just sit tight and keep watching. Now, I showed you this creature. Now, before I continue, I was talking to a friend of mine on the phone just a little while ago, and I said, you know, I don't know how to deliver this stuff sometimes to people because I don't want to say, you know, over and over, this is a gift. But I'm tired of people thinking that, you know, this is research. This is not research. This is vision, the ability to see. It's not mine. It doesn't belong to me. It's a gift. A lot of people go, oh, he's always saying it's a gift. Yeah, because it's a gift. I don't own it. It's, it's a gift. And so God is giving this gift to you. It has nothing to do with me. He's giving it to you. I got to suffer through it. That's all. Here's the gift. This creature right here. This is the dragon inside the head of the creature. You see the dragon? The mind of the dragon. 
It's got wings. Here the eyes are. It looks eye, eye, nose, neck, breast, breast, vagina. I want to show you something on the vagina. See the vagina is the face of the devil. We looked at that just a minute ago. There it is. That's the same thing right here. I just did a layover on it. The vagina is the face of the devil. Because when any human being breeds a male and a female, when the when the, the two cells meet, here you go. When the two cells meet, you have this situation. You have what's called a vesica pisis form. I'm going to show you on my shirt. I want to show you something. There you go. Under Armour. There you go. You see the Under Armour logo? Look. There you go. Seed of the serpent. Seed of the woman. Right there on my shirt. Under Armour. Right side up. And upside down. That's how all, for, all flesh was formed. All of it. Every single bit. So... When anyone has sex, those two cells intersect. Every time they intersect, you have a new prison, a new human body. That's a prison because every human has to be redeemed by the blood of Christ or you go to hell. I mean, everyone's born into judgment. Every single human being on the planet is, I, and, and sin did my mother conceive me. I was formed in, in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. No one is born. People are like, oh, well, little babies aren't. Sit in, I was formed in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Now, let's have a look at where this goes. This is the creature that formed all flesh right here. You're getting to see the greatest adversary of humanity. Right here. You're looking at it. The Lord allowed me to draw it in. That's what's living underground. That's what's producing the other race of beings, using human bodies as host bodies. Now listen, I told you that tonight I would drop the bomb that made me cry and cry and cry. Because I realized it's all true. We'll get to it. I want to make sure I get just these basics down. You see this creature that has these two breasts here and here and the vagina is the face of the devil? There it is. I mean, there it is. Well, right after I showed this to my son, I said, you know, check this out. I went to the grocery store and I walked into the grocery store and they were selling dresses. I was like, what the heck is the grocery store? Right when you walked in the door. Oh my gosh, look. It's the same thing. Look, it's a female reproductive system and it makes the face of the devil. Look at the horns right up here. Look, let's go over here. Horn. Horn, eye, eye. It's also the reproductive system. And look where the vagina is. And look where the, the mouth of the devil is. Look where it falls on the dress, right where the vagina is. Mouth of the devil, where the vagina is. A dress at the store. A dress at the freaking grocery store. Has the face of the devil, female reproductive system, and the mouth of the devil is where the vagina is. Yeah. Okay. There it is. You're looking right at it. This is the way the Lord confirms stuff to me. He's like, yeah, you got it. Absolutely. Uh, at the bottom of the dress is the same image upside down, by the way. So, this is part one. We're just doing a little refresher. Let's look at them side by side. Oh my gosh. Eye, eye, nose, mouth open. Horns, eye, eye, mustache, mouth, beard, horns, female reproductive system. Wow. <laughs> wow. A, a dress at the grocery store. The Vatican. The creature that produced all flesh, as we know it, all flesh. Stay tuned. Okay, so now we've seen the creature. We've seen the, va the vagina of the creature is the face of the devil. 
We've seen the exact same thing on a dress that's in the grocery store. It's identical. So let's look again at that giant altar in the Catholic Church. Now, let me let me put this in perspective for you. This is the largest church in the world. Uh, it's the largest church in the world, boasting of the largest number of, of uh, members. And it allegedly is a Christian church, meaning they follow Christ. Um, well, the entire altar is, is a giant bug. It's a giant locust. I've shown you that. This whole thing is a giant locust. And the mouth of the locust, which is right here, is a stained glass window. And in that stained glass window is a bunch of God's angels being sucked into a vortex right here. So here all God's angels are being sucked into a vortex. Now, this part of the, this part of the throne itself is part of another image of a sheep with its tongue sticking out. So the hair of the sheep, let's look at the whole throne very quickly. Okay, here we go. So here you are in the church, and you're looking at the largest altar in the whole, in the whole place, and right here is the face of a giant dead sheep. There's the eye, there's the eye, nostril, nostril, teeth, and then the hair on the sheep is all the angels going into a vortex. That vortex is the female reproductive system. Let me show you. Okay, now remember Isaiah said, though, in Isaiah 29, 14, and 15, those who try and hide their plans from the Lord are doomed. They carry out their schemes in secret and think no one will see them or know what they are doing. They turn everything upside down. So we turn up the, the entire altar of the dead sheep upside down. And here is the female reproductive system. Here is the ovary. It's made from the miter hat, the fallopian tube. Ovary, fallopian tube. By the way, the two other guys that are standing here, and here you'll see the horns. Go look at it closely. It's a devil upside down. It's, it's quite fascinating, really. Anyway, so here are the ovaries and the fallopian tubes and the uterus and the cervix and the vagina and the clitoris. And here is the opening and all these angels that are being sucked into this vortex are being sucked into the female reproductive system. Let's just have a look. Let's just match it up. I, I don't want to be in a hurry. I really want to just take my time. I kind of feel rushed because I want to be under 15 minutes on each part. But you know what? It is what it is. I'll just do as many parts as I have to. Here we go. So here is the female reproductive system, ovary, fallopian tube, ovary, fallopian tube, ovary, fallopian tube, ovary, fallopian tube. Okay, here we go. Here's the uterus. Follow the black. Uterus. Uterus, right? Cervix. Vagina. Okay, and then, then you'll be on the exterior now clitoris, and the opening to the vagina. I mean, this is where all the angels are going in. So why are all the angels going into a giant upside-down vagina? I mean, the Bible says, those who try and hide their plans from the Lord are doomed. They carry out their schemes in secret and think no one will see them or know what they're doing. They turn everything upside down. Well, they turned everything upside down in the garden when they got Eve to fall. And then Eve got Adam to fall. And so began the whole paradigm on the planet, which was twins, Cain and Abel. And Cain killed his brother Abel. The system is vampiric because the creature that I showed you in the previous part, that creature feeds on us. We are the food. Now, I want to show you another image of that creature. Before I show you the image of the creature, I forgot. I wanted to show you this side by side. So here is the face of a sheep. Here is the altar of the dead sheep. The tongue is sticking out down here. So you have this giant altar of a dead sheep, and when you turn it upside down, it's the female reproductive system. Um, all the angels I showed you are falling into that. They're falling into that vortex. Let me show you something. When a baby is born, a baby comes in upside down. It, it, it exits the vagina, uh, unless it's breached, but most babies are born head first. 
And they come in head down. You're born head down. You're basically born upside down. Um, so here is a drawing that illustrates, you know, the the stages of birth. And then here the baby is crowning instantly. It's funny. He's crowned into this kingdom, into the flesh, into his new uh, his new realm. This is an angel falling into the flesh and having to live out his life in the flesh. Let me show you a very curious picture of myself. Now, by the way, this is fascinating to me because... I always want to know why in the world am I always falling out of the sky upside down? The, the, there are more point of purchase ads for Vlad sunglasses that I was in and every single one is upside down. So this is upside down, upside down. This is a close up of the same one, but there's other point of purchase ads that I didn't put in here where I'm not wearing tennis shoes. I'm wearing yellow lenses. And I'm also upside down. It's evidence. God wanted me to know that predestination is real. Oddly enough, I have lightning bolts on my sleeves. This one had a big triangle on it. Very strange, don't you think? Very odd. So anyway, that was one of those little things God showed me years ago that I chose you for this. And I'm like, I can't make sense of it. Now it all makes sense. So anyway, we're birthed into the world upside down. I'm falling head down. And all the angels of God are being sucked into a vortex, a vagina. That's a giant upside down reproductive system. And right side up, the entire thing is a dead sheep. Now, now it's time just to show you all where this is all going. Okay, now... It is very important that you understand the cumulative sum of this image that doesn't want to seem to move. Please move. Okay, the cumulative sum of this image is going to change everybody's lives. I guarantee it if, if you understand it. This creature is running everything from below ground. This is the government of the earth right here. The dragon. You see the dragon right there? In the mind, the mind of the dragon. You see these little circles that make up the wings also? This is also like a signal leaving a microphone. Like when a signal leaves a microphone. You know, like have you ever seen a drawing of that? So anyway, so this is like a central processing unit for the mind of the dragon. But I want you to look right here. You see there is an owl up here, right here. There's an owl. This is very important. You understand there's owls, eye, eye. There's the beak. Here's the wings coming down like this. Let's look at it in full size. There you go. Well, I want you to look at the beak of the owl. There's a guy's face right there. He's actually in a slave collar. I've done this before. I broke this down, but I had no idea it was it was going to come back and be like this. This is this is going to blow your minds. I mean, this is the reason I was crying. So I want you to look at this creature. See the creature, the hunter? This hunts all human beings. And the way it hunts human beings is through host bodies of other human beings. Every human being has the creature in it. Let's pause and think about what Romans 8 said. The creature itself, the creature itself shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. And the reason is because inside of me, there the creature is inside of me. You know that song by the Imagine Dragons, but what it's called Demons, but with the beast inside, there's nowhere we can hide. This is my kingdom come. This is my kingdom come. That's just a manifestation of the same thing. The creature itself was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. So there's a, there's a good bad Jonathan and a bad Jonathan. The bad Jonathan is the creature, the, the beast inside of me. And so the creature itself shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. If you're adopted, what does that mean? It means you had another dad and another mom. It's, which, it's what adoption means. 
we have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry Abba, A, B, B, A. It's a mere reflection. Because when you know the truth, you know God. When you know the truth, you know Jesus. Jesus is the truth. When you know the truth, you know the word. When you know the word, you know Jesus. Do you understand? Jesus is the word. Jesus is the truth. If you don't know the truth of the Gospels, you don't know Jesus. If you don't know the word, the logos, you don't know Jesus. If you don't know what it means, you don't know Jesus. Jesus said that day, many will say, Lord, Lord, have we not done many wonderful works in your name? Have we not prophesied, cast out demons, and done many wonderful works? And he'll say, depart from me, I never knew you. You that work iniquity. So those people thought they knew God. They thought they knew him. And he said, you know, whoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, the word for sayings is, look it up, logos. Shall be like a wise man who built his house on the Petra. That's the Petra. Turning everything upside down. That's the Petra. That's the key to the kingdom of heaven. So anyway, here it is, the creature. And we ourselves, grown within ourselves, grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. That's right, because the one that produced our bodies by breeding, by, by, by this breeding thing, the creature that produced that is this giant, this is the head, this is the queen bee right here that everybody worships. And underground, what you're dealing with is that right there. This is the creature from the pit. You know, like the locust, but I still haven't gotten to the part I told you I was going to get to. I had to drag it out because I had to make sure you have all of this. I want you to look at this owl. I want you to consider this giant owl on top of the head of this creature. The mind of the dragon. This is the dragon's mind, the collective consciousness. And here's a guy that's in a slave collar. That's what we're going to look at. That's the part that made me just burst into tears when I show you what it is. But I want to show you some, one more thing before we do that. So before we unleash this, the final mind destroyer, I want you all to look at this. You all know the Bohemian Grove? The Bohemian Grove where all our, lots of our politicians and presidents go? Kissinger, the Bushes, Clintons, those guys? They stand and they do mock sacrifices, maybe mock. I'm sure some of them are probably real. And uh, they stand in front of this big image of, of it's Molech for these guys, okay? And so it's a big owl. See the big owl right here? The big owl right here? Bohemian Grove, even their logo is Bohemian Grove. See it? The owl. You want to know why they worship the owl? That's why. Let me show you a better picture of it. Okay, so here's the creature from the pit. There's the owl right on top. See it? I colored the head gray and the wings kind of brownish tint to come down. And then all our politicians go to the Bohemian Grove. Well, when I say all, I want to clarify that. We have a large group of our politicians and leaders that participate in the Bohemian Grove. There's your owl right there. They worship. This is Lucifer, guys. You're looking at the angel from the bottomless pit. You are looking right at the decrypted image of the angel of the bottomless pit, Abaddon. You're looking at Apollyon. There it is. Owl. Owl. Ow. Ow. Now, remember I told you the slave collar is around the neck of the guy that's in here. That's what had me in tears because the Lord showed me what's coming for everybody. And it's coming soon. So next part, that's what you're going to see. What's happening? Well, my sources are no longer fully annotated, and my information is somewhat anecdotal. But I believe what was once one race is now two. One above and one below. Two distinct species 
they're like, well, and how do those alone survive? That's, That's a good question. question. And how do those alone survive? And how do those alone survive? And how do those alone survive? So how do those below survive? You see that giant altar of a dead sheep? That's how they survive. Let me show you what that's from. Can you tell, tell me what's happening? happening? Yeah. Well, my well, source is a more wonderful than anything in the more information of somebody I've heard of. But I believe what was once one race is now two. One above and one below. Two of the same species that have evolved. And how do those alone survive? That is the real question, isn't it? Wink his eye. Psalm thirty-five nineteen. They eat sheep. You're the sheep. They eat you because you're the sheep. I want to make a point, the largest altar, the largest altar in the largest church in the world is a dead sheep. It's also a female reproductive system. All God's angels are falling into a hole. They're going, they're falling into a dimension. It's the flesh. They're being birthed into the flesh as their everlasting chains of darkness unto the judgment of the great day. If you don't get converted, you die. And you go into the pit, and all of hell is resurrected and thrown into the lake of fire. Now, the Bible says Satan prowls around, around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, because he devours human souls. Now the whole parable of the evil farmers takes on a whole new meaning, doesn't it? Yes, we're being farmed as food. Correct. So, now I want to get to the quintessential mind blower of this whole thing. How do the ones below ground survive? Well, the human race is a slave race. We're born into bondage. Every time those two cells intersect, every time they intersect, they make a new prison right there. That's the new prison for all of us. That's it. Every time that happens, the intersection of the two sets creates another host body, another prison cell. Every egg and every sperm that connect form two pronuclei, and when they intersect, another prison cell. Why do you think everybody in the flesh has to be redeemed? Because they're born into this. They go through this. They go through the dimension into the flesh, and they're trapped in the flesh. That's why every human has to be redeemed, bought back, redeemed, reconciled. It all makes perfect sense now. But let me show you something that's most disturbing of all. And that's about to happen. And then I'll give you a personal testimony on how the Lord showed me it was going to happen. He guaranteed me it's going to happen. Just like he showed me that dress when I walked in the grocery store. I was like, oh my God. There's a devil on the dress. And the mouth of the devil is on the vagina where the girl would wear the dress. And that's exactly what we've been looking at, isn't it? That's crazy. That's impossible. And so I was like, oh my gosh, well, wait till you see how the Lord confirmed what's about to happen. And let me show you what should probably be the most disturbing thing on planet Earth. Get your Bibles out and open Revelation 9, please. Okay, I hope you have your Bibles open. This is what's about to happen. We're coming up into the season. The season is coming. It's right before us. That's why the Lord has revealed this now. He's trying to prepare the hearts and the minds of the people. I'm a harbinger. 
Maybe you figured out the reason I'm always falling out of the sky upside down is for a reason. I was redeemed by the blood of Christ. I was called as a harbinger in 2002. Okay, here we go. Revelation 9. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded then that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which had not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were, as it were, crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men, and they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions, and they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle, and they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice. So these locusts that come out onto the earth, okay, in the description, they had hair as the hair of a woman and the teeth of lions. The shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared for battle. And on their heads, as it were, were like crowns of gold. And their faces were the faces as, as were the faces of men. Let me show you something. And let's just cut to the chase now. This is what's coming. Okay, now remember, it's very important you understand this entirety. The cumulative sum of this image, Abaddon, the mind of the dragon. And you see the slave collar that's on this guy right here, which is the beak of the owl, like the one that like all our politicians go and worship in front of this big owl. Because this is what they're worshiping. They're worshiping Abaddon, Apollyon. Because they can see he runs everything, and he does. He runs everything on the surface of the earth. It is his world. Um, now, let me show you this particular image right here of the slave collar. Let me show you another image of a guy in a slave collar, collar in, in the Vatican. Now let's break it down. Okay, here we go. Well, we only have 10 minutes, 5 minutes left. Let's go down and break this down into pieces. Okay, well, I'll take this one first. We're going to take this and right underneath this guy, I'm going to show you what it is. Now, remember the Jaguar commercial said, we've already created a beast. It's time for a whole new animal with the same potent DNA. Here is a beast right under this guy. Here's the guy, and there's the eye. There's the eye. There's the nose. Here's the fangs right here, fangs, and the jaw wide open. Now I'll decrease it in size, and I'll show it to you where I don't draw in so you can see it. This is just, you know, like I said, you know, it, it is my spiritual gift. It's what the Lord allows me to see. Okay, so now that I've shown it to you right here, all you have to do is look right here. 
and you can see it yourself. It's very easy to see. There's a lot more going on in this image, but I'm going to stick with what's important. So they've already created a beast. And by the way, these represent horns like a devil horns. <clears throat> because the devil, you know, we are the devil, folks. That's the big news. Everybody on the planet's surface is the devil. The flesh is the devil. The creature. You are of your father, the devil. That's why we have to be born again of the spirit. Okay, now watch. Here we go. Golly, it's, I don't know if I want to unleash this part just yet or wait till the next part. I don't want to be in a hurry showing it to you. Okay, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's just go ahead and look at it. You know what? I'm going to give you another image before we look at it. Okay, so here's an image of a locust coming out of a hole in the ground. I just want you to see the general disposition of what it looks like. I want you to just take a look at this coming out of the hole in the ground. Okay, let's go back to our images now. Oops. There we go. Okay, so here it is. Here's what humans are being used for. Remember, Isaiah said, those who hide their plans from the Lord turn everything upside down. Here it is. Here's the locust coming out of the ground. There's its eye. There's its eye. Nose or face shield. Mandible right there. Mandible right there. Hole in the ground. See it coming out of the hole in the ground? See this? It has a crown made by the teeth of this guy. It's wearing a crown. It's a locust emerging from the pit. And when I was decrypting this, I was like, oh my God, it's a locust coming out of the ground. This is what we're being used for. This is why the guy is in chains. This is what it means. Those who hide their plans they turn everything upside down. They birth the entire human race. And they use our souls to birth this race of beings underground. That's what's going on. Tell me what's happening here. They're using oh, us as food. No our souls. But I believe what was once one race is now two. And above and one below. Two distinct species that have evolved. And how do those below survive? That is the real question, isn't it? But... And how do those below survive? But... And how do those below survive? But... And how do those below survive? By breeding us into human flesh and by breeding us into human flesh and then living off our energy and creating another race of beings that's going to come out of a pit. And when they come out of the pit, anyone that doesn't have the seal of God on their foreheads will be stung and you'll seek to die and you won't find death i'm going to keep going on another part after this so now i can chill out okay so now i'm going to give you a couple quick testimonies while we look at these locusts coming out of the ground um that's pretty mind destroying guys one way right side up look look at look at what it is right side up by the way it's a guy and you know even though you see his teeth when you reduce the image his tongue is sticking all the way out of his mouth all you have to do is reduce the image and his tongue sticking out just like the mayan calendar just like the aztec calendar 
but it has to be reduced in size to see it. So you have a guy, a man this way that's in iron shackles underneath him, uh, just a, a violent looking beast. When you turn it upside down, here's that violent looking beast, like a vampire. When you turn the whole thing upside down, it becomes a locust wearing a crown. That's exactly what the Bible says. So I'm drawing in a picture that is identical to Revelation 9. They had tails like unto scorpions, hair of women, their teeth was the teeth of lions. They had uh, crowns as, as gold. Their crowns were like gold. And you have these creatures, and we actually have an image of these creatures coming up out of the pit. So here we go. Here, here it is emerging. And the reason it's emerging is because it's taken the energy of a human being, the soul, to create this other race of beings. Now, don't forget, above ground, there's a race of beings that's converting also. That's where they come up with this as above, so below. The government of the earth is run from below, people. You know that little thing they had that happened in Switzerland where they opened the tunnel and they had the freak show of all freak shows? Did y'all see that? Yeah, well, do you know why? I know why. Because it was a tunnel. What's under the Vatican? a bunch of tunnels. Where do cicadas, locusts, where do they live? Where do these things live? Underground in tunnels. There it is. You're looking right at it. You're looking at it emerging from the ground. I mean, this is a, just doesn't even require intelligent thought. Look at the artwork. I'm an artist. That thing is emerging. You see the way there's dark all around the edges? You see the mandibles? You see when it's right side up, they made the guy's hair real wavy. I'll put all these lines in. But when you turn it upside down, it's because it's emerging out of a hole. Let me show you. Yes, it's absolutely emerging. It's emerging out of a hole. It's coming out of the ground. Hang on. Sorry, we had a little glitch. So here's the cumulative sum. This creature, Apollyon, Abaddon, uses the collective consciousness of humans in slave collars as an above-ground species that they draw energy from, their souls. Those souls are from the God's angels that fell, must have gotten in trouble. And they came through a dimension, a portal called the flesh. And they came and they were burnt into human skin, chains of everlasting darkness. Because if you don't wake up to this, then you you don't you don't know the truth and you don't come to the knowledge of the truth and you don't have Christ as your savior by the way Jesus is the truth so he is the truth that came to redeem sinful flesh the flesh those guys own it it's their creation satan made it he made all all this flesh that we're in well when the fall in the garden, we got serpent skin after that. And this is the serpent. You're looking right at it. You're looking eye to eye to the serpent right there. Hidden right in plain sight in the Vatican. And then you see the slave collar that goes on this human being? That's the, the beak of the owl. Now we know why all our politicians go to the Bohemian Grove. Now we know why there's all these societies like, uh, you know, the Illuminati uses the owl because the owl is a silent killer and it sees in the dark. 
that's why they use the owl and it's on here this is this is the actual manifestation of the creature now let me show you a little picture of the guy hr geiger that did the alien movies let me show you how plugged in this guy was now by the way i didn't want to show you all this because it's too much but here's hr geiger being birthed out of a vagina with these two aliens on each side right here are aliens on both sides of this guy same as this there's an alien right here in the fetal position there's its head and it, that's its back here's its arms going forward and there's its leg going up and bending and foot it's 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 an alien there's two of them living off the souls twins living off the souls of us right side up it's a human and he's in chains and shackles when you turn it upside down it's the new it's the beast i mean it is the monster and it's gonna be unleashed that's why these shackles that are on this thing they these shackles that are on this uh this guy when you turn it upside down it's the creature emerging and once that creature emerges it's unleashed it comes off a leash you see it there it is you are literally looking at what the bible is talking about why do you think i was in tears i was like oh my god all the people i love and care about that haven't accepted christ and don't know the truth and don't want to see this stuff and they don't know the real jesus and i don't care who anybody is if you don't know who jesus is and you don't know that he's the rock of offense and the word rock means petra which means massive rock and the word offense means literally and i quote a bent sapling snare a trap that turns everything upside down if you don't know the real jesus this is what's coming for you why do you think i was like oh my god they won't listen these people that leave these crazy comments. Oh, you're crazy. I'm like, really? I passed three MMPIs to get custody of all my kids. I, you know, I beat the number one family law, uh, family attorney in, in Brainerd, Minnesota. And I, by myself, pro se. Because the Lord was on my side. You can't beat this. You can't fight that. You cannot beat this thing. You see that thing? You can't beat that. Let me show you another way the Lord showed me. You got it right. These are our show notes over here. And when you open your show notes, you get what's called a random image. You see that random image? Some random image just pops up here. Now, I want to show you the random image that popped up when I was drawing in this locust head. Okay, remember, here's the locust. One way, it's a guy in shackles. The other way, it's a locust, and the shackles are coming off. It's on a leash right now. Let me show you the random image that popped up on my screen. I just about fell out of my seat. Oh, wow. Does that look familiar? Eye, eye, mouth, mandibles. Oh my gosh. So on the back of a bicyclist head, facing one way is a human and facing the other way is the same damn thing that's coming out of this hole. I'm wearing an Under Armour shirt, or at least I was, and it has a U and an A, and it makes the Vesica Pisces. I mean, do you all understand that the entire human race is a slave race to this thing right here, and it's building the planet using humans as an above-ground slave? Just like when you see an ant nest. When you see a fire ant nest, you see uh, evidence of it. You see a big mat. It's called an ant mound. Well, if you kick the mound, most of the ants are under the ground. The mound is just the dirt that they've excavated. So they're way down there. Same thing, all the buildings you see on the planet's surface, we're the slaves building those buildings for them, for these guys down below us. Remember, 
What was one race is now two, one above, one below. How do the ones below ground survive? Man, that's how they survive. We're the sheep. This is the largest altar in the world in any church of the largest number of members. And it's a dead sheep, and it's the female reproduction system. And those are God's angels going right into it. Guess what's coming out now? Now that this other race of beings has established and taken what they came, what they, what they were after, they're going to be unleashed. It's just what the Bible says. And the pit will be opened. And out of the smoke of the pit, locusts upon the earth right there. You see the locusts upon the earth? You see the human in the slave collar? Because of that, and if I can click the right image, you'll see what's coming for everybody. That's why I was crying. Because that thing's coming out of a hole. And it's coming for everybody on the surface of the earth. That's why I was crying. Because people that I know and love won't listen. And people that are arrogant, just arrogant haters, won't listen. And that's what's coming. Now, I told you the Lord had a real, real interesting way of confirming this. And he did it with the dress I showed you. I walked into the grocery store and walked right into a dress. They don't sell dresses at the grocery store. I mean, they don't. But they were. And on the dress was the same thing as the image of Apollyon or Abaddon. The face or the vagina was the face of the devil. Here's how he showed me what was going to happen. Do you have any idea what's going on out there? We'll find out soon enough. Tommy Covington, if you are watching this, then I'm probably dead. I'm going to pause it. The program's lagging. I told you I was watching the movie uh, Risen, and this came on. I, I was, I was fast-forwarding through the commercials, doing the chapter, you know, skip chapter button. And I heard the Lord say, stop, and I stopped, and then I hit play, and this came on. So that was the way the Lord confirmed it. This is the first season of Bad The bell ringing. This is it. So there's all the locusts coming out of the sky. And there's a locust at the same time that I'm doing, that I'm decrypting this stuff. There's that coming over my screen. Okay, look, I see some of you guys out there going, hey, well, what do I do to get saved, find Jesus? Here's what you do. You seek Jesus out with your entire heart. That's what you do. That's what I did. I stood in my living room and I confessed. I said, you know, I deserve to go to hell. I've done so many things to make my millions that I deserve to go to hell. And I was like, you know, I got the car. I got the money. I got the girl. I got the house. I got all of it. And now I sold my soul to get it. 
And so I prayed and I said, you know, I'd like to know Jesus. But the thing is, I was raised Catholic and they pray to the Virgin. And I said, you know, and my friend is Mormon. And they say, he said, if you don't have his Jesus, you're going to go to hell. And I knew another guy that was Jehovah's Witness. He said the same thing. And, you know, Baptists and everybody had a different Jesus. And I was like, which Jesus is it? So I stood there. And I say, an honest prayer from the heart. That's how you find Jesus. And you give him an honest prayer. And you, I admitted I deserve to go to hell. And I said, I just want to know who the real Jesus is. I just want to know the truth. And so the night I got saved, you know, go, re, my, go check out my personal testimony on YouTube. He uh, told me to turn everything upside down and I would see the 100% truth. Jesus is the 100% truth. He is the truth. So if you look in Matthew 16, let me show you the first recognition of Jesus in the scriptures. Uh, Jesus said, who do people say that I am? And so he asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? Now listen, this is a good point. M man can't tell you. You've got to find him yourself. I can show you what he's shown me and share with you the gifts he's given me. But you got to find him yourself. You got to ask. And it said, some say thou art John the Baptist. Some say Elias. And others say Jeremiah is one of the prophets. Everybody was wrong. And then Jesus said unto them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter said, I say thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said, blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah. Look, means son of Jonah. See? And by the way, the sign of Jonas is in this scripture, but this is that's an advanced sign. You know what? Skip it. Let's just keep going. Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood did not reveal it unto thee. So he's telling you right there, you don't find out who Jesus is, except from God the, the Father himself. He says, but my Father which is in heaven. The Bible says no one comes to the Son unless the Father leads them. So you have to ask God the Father and pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And then just ask with your heart, show me the real Jesus. And here's where the real Jesus can be found in the scriptures. And so Peter said, you're the Christ. And Jesus said, hey, blessed are you, Simon Bar of Jonah, for flesh and blood did not reveal it to you, but my Father which is in heaven. So the revelation of the Messiah came from the Father. That's the way it always comes. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter. Look what it means. Petros. It means a piece of rock. And then he says, and, and I say unto thee that thou art Petros. And upon this rock, look right here, Petra, I will build my church. So if you're going to be in Jesus' church, he says, upon this rock, I will build my church. The word church, okay, well, let's go back. The word Petra, upon this rock, I will build my church. So you got to be on that rock no matter what. Well, the definition of that word is Petra. It means mass of rock because he's the foundation. And Peter is a little piece of rock and he's the building stone. Well, guess what? Peter was crucified upside down. And by the way, that's not the devil sign. That's my broken finger that's been broken for years. And I'm showing you, turn it upside down. So, and then he tells Peter, and I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give to you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. I just gave you the keys. I've been giving you guys the keys for a long time. You put a key in the lock. You turn the key upside down and the door opens. My goodness. You look. Okay, so here's a dead sheep. Put the key in the lock. Turn it upside down. It's the female reproductive system. Okay, I mean, here, turn this guy upside down and he becomes a locust. Turn the virgin upside down and it becomes a dead sheep. I mean, my goodness. So, look, 
let me show you one more scripture. You need to go just check it out. So upon this rock, I will build my church. Upon this Petra, look at it. It's G4073. And he tells Peter, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Go to 2 Peter 2. Watch. 2 Peter 2. No. 1 Peter 2. 1 Peter 2. Okay, look. Here it is. You have tasted that the Lord is good. Look. If it is so that you tasted the Lord is gracious, to whom coming? Because you want to come to Christ. As a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, you also as living stones are being up into a spiritual house, temple, right there. A spiritual temple, right here, temple. So we are the temple. It's not a building. You are being built up as living stones, you know, building a temple that God occupies. Now look, unto you that wherefore which believe, he is precious, but to them which are disobedient, the stone rejected by the builders. By the way, I showed you the builders. They're building everything from underground using humans as slaves. The say, Now look, the stone rejected by the builders disallowed. Uh, the same is made the head of the corner, okay? So Jesus is the chief cornerstone. Now watch. He is a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word. So they think they know the Logos. Jesus is the Logos. So Jesus is synonymous with the Logos. So these people, stu they stumble. Jesus is a stone of stumbling. It means a stone of stumbling. It means apostasy. And look at this. There's that word, and a rock. Remember? you got to be on the rock to be in his church. And he is a rock. Look at the word. Oh, it's G4073. Petra, there it is. And he is the rock of offense. Look at this. Look at what it says. Skandalon. It's a trap, a stick, a bent sapling that is a snare. Read it for yourself. A snare. What happens in a snare? What happens in a snare? It turns its victim upside down. So all you got to do is turn everything upside down. Uh, when, when we went for that, that's what happened. Snare. You see it? So that's why the Lord showed me. Turn the virgin upside down. You got caught in the snare, buddy. I was like, oh my gosh. I mean, that's the story of my life. I stepped into a snare and this was it. Anyway, I hope that helps. You know, I mean, seek him with your whole heart. I mean, turn everything upside down. If you've got the key to the kingdom of heaven, you put a key in a lock, you turn it upside down and the door opens. Seek him with all your heart. I've given you everything you need. Um, now, let me show you what happened. I was walking out the door to my house while I was working on this locust thing after I'd been crying, just like, oh, my Lord. And um, I heard the Lord say, look at the, the picture on your counter. Now, here on this counter in my, in my house, I put some of these pictures out just for my dad because my mom died. And this is my mom and my dad. And then this is a picture of our family, me and my brother's. And the rest are me and my kids. All the other pictures are me and my kids. I've got one picture of my mom and dad and one picture of me and my brothers and sister, my mom and dad, when we were all little. And I heard the Lord say, Jonathan, look at that picture. Click on it, like, uh, pick it up and photograph it. And I thought, wow, that's weird. Photograph it. So I picked it up and it's a picture of me and my brothers and sisters sitting in a, in a horse-drawn carriage. And I went, oh my God, we're in front of the Vatican. And I'm sitting there just going, that's crazy. And I heard the Lord say, photograph it with your phone and enlarge it. So I did. I photographed it and I enlarged it. And after I enlarged it, he said, look at the number under you, 18. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. You couldn't see it in the picture. I had to photograph it and enlarge it to see the number 18. 
And this is me right here in the front. And I'm sitting right on top of the number 18. This is me right here. And, and I heard the Lord say, look up the biblical meaning of 18. Now listen, I just did this series called You Are the Fallen. And I told everybody in part one, I said, look guys, I'm showing you the, a good tree and a bad tree. You know, if you don't understand this, don't call me a false prophet because by your words, you'll be justified and by your words, you will be condemned. And if you go look this up in Esword, it means by your preaching, you shall be justified. That's what it means. Watch, I'll prove it. Okay, so on part one, I put this up. And it says, I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, it says to utter, to talk is to utter words, preach, say, speak. So if I'm, if I'm bringing forth words that are evil words, I will be judged by God for those words. If I'm telling you something that's not true and I'm preaching to you something that's not true, God will absolutely judge me for that. So I, I was walking out of my house and I heard the Lord say, look at that picture. And I looked at it and went, oh my gosh, it's the Vatican. And I heard the Lord say, take it out and photograph it. I have a surprise for you. And I was like, oh wow, that's crazy. And so I, I photographed this picture. I enlarged it and the number 18 is right underneath me. You can see it right there. It's that it's that uh right there and so the lord said i have a surprise for you because he knows the kind of flack i take from people my god people are mean crazy and cruel it's like and so anyway he said look up the biblical meaning of 18 i have a surprise for you and i looked it up and it says god's righteousness goes forth and it says to justify to make right, to justify. Wow. By your words, you will be justified. And by your words, you will be condemned. He told me, I have a surprise for you. I told y'all, I just finished the ministry he gave me. I literally got to the end of human existence. Where we came from, where we're going, what's going to happen. And he told me, I have a surprise for you. Look up. Photograph that picture. Enlarge it. Look at the number right under you. Look it up in the look up biblical meaning of 18. I just told everybody, guys, don't be mean. Don't be hateful. By our words we'll be justified or condemned. And I he told me open it up. It says justified. To make ju to make right. To justify. And that's the Lord telling me, don't worry about what these people say. You're justified in my sight. I'm the one that gave you all this. And I know that. I mean, goodness gracious. I'm falling out of the sky upside down and that's my gift. I mean, come on, you know. My name means Yahweh has given a messenger that rings the bell. Come on. I mean, really? I have a company called Vampire Sunglasses. Come on. It's a, yeah. Yahweh is given a messenger that rings a bell, gathers the church. Come on. There's no way. But he wanted to just encourage me because I take so much flack from so many haters. And they're just children of the devil. The Bible said if they persecuted me, they'll persecute you. If they hated me, they'll hate you. All right, guys, I only got a few seconds left on this because I'm limited to 15 minutes. I'll catch you guys tomorrow.